Welcome to the Make Your Own Hacker Gadget series at Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we will look at having your open WRT connect to the internet. Now keep in mind this is an absolute free course. These PDF slides and eventually code snippets, automation scripts, everything including updates and interesting offers will be made available exclusively to people who register at pentesteracademy.com slash yd. So please do that and that also gives me an idea of how many people have actually used this course. Okay, so in the last video, we've telneted into the box and we've set the password and we've logged in using the GUI interface. Now keep in mind that the moment you go ahead and set the password, Telnet gets disabled. However, you can still SSH into the box. So let's go back. Now I have my MR3020 all working here and <laughs> I've gone ahead and really unboxed it, if you know what I mean. So cute little circuit board, uh, eventually I might you know, try to have a 3D printer and print a much more cool looking uh, case and see if I can transfer it on that. And if you guys do anything of that sort, definitely tweet to us. Be fun to know. Okay, so let me SSH into it. The SSH password, of course, remains the same. I have too many. routers with the same IP, there you go, and here we go, open WRT in my case, and I'm in. Now, one of the first things you would like to do is put the box on the internet, right, so that we can download packages, we can upload stuff and a ton of other interesting things. So the first thing is network connectivity. If you do an if config hyphen a, you'd actually find a couple of interfaces in there. If you notice by default, WLAN zero is disabled. Now let's go ahead and enable it. I'm gonna use the web interface because it's a lot more easier to work with that for most people. I'm going to go to network and if you notice at this point there isn't a wireless interface yet however we can go to Wi-Fi and if you notice it says wireless is disabled right so let's go ahead and enable it right and at this point WLAN 0 is up However, what I'd like to do is disable this once again. Scan for networks. At this point, I really want to have my system act more like a client so that I can connect to the internet, right? Now, I have already set up a home AP called Totally Secure. Let me click on Join Network. I can mention the key in here. All the other default settings would do right now. Click submit. Now here is a small catch, right? Uh, just by clicking submit, well, you haven't configured and running it yet. You have to again go down in the next page and click save and apply. Right? Keep that in mind. The very first time I was playing with open WRT, well, I didn't quickly read through the pages and I just sat there waiting for it to connect, thinking something was wrong. Now, if you notice, we are connected to the totally secure access point. Fantastic. Let's wait for everything to be applied. That's all done. And now if I do an if config once again, actually see WLAN zero has an IP address. Now, keep in mind that if your uh, home network connection also has an IP in the same range, you would end up having a conflict. 
Now by default open WRT uses 192.168.1.1. So remember your home Wi-Fi should probably use something else. If there is a collision in IP address then definitely change at least one of these right again uh, initial level issues which you might see right. Now the route seems to be set up all fine. You can actually see that everything is going to go through 192.168.10.1 which is great. Now let's go back to the slides real quick. So we have set up Wi-Fi. Now what you would actually notice is a lot of times if uh, there are issues with getting the DHCP address uh, you could actually use UDHCPC which is a client locally, you do a UDHCPC hyphen I WLAN 0 right and this would get you an IP address as well just in case it doesn't work as it should right keep that in mind. Uh, apart from that by default you might actually see that DNS would not be working right in this case uh, it seems to be but in case you are having issues you could actually go ahead and write to resolve.com directly okay it's here you can write to it directly I typically always like the open DNS server so 208.67.222.222 is something you could use and you could do an echo name server 208.67.222.222 and then write this to resolve.conf right keep that in mind now the DHCP address and writing to the resolve.conf is in case you have any issues right so keep that in mind now we are able to connect to anything on the internet which is all fantastic Now let's actually look at the amount of space which we have on the device. So if you do a df-h, you'd find that the amount of space is abysmally low, which is expected, right? It's an embedded device. They really never expected anyone to extend it, add more stuff to it. So uh, it's, it's, it's to an extent where it's almost pretty much unusable. So if I go here, click on system, click on software I'll actually find the amount of free space is just 872 KB Oof, that's nothing now the GUI also gives you a quick look at all the different packages which are installed currently uh, most of this could you could just allow them to be as is you don't really need to you know change anything let's just be as is Now here is what let's try to do at this point. We'll go ahead and try and connect our USB device to this. So I'm going to connect my USB key to the device. and let me do a quick D message now if you notice it does detect but we don't have any other information at all right so let's actually see if it's been auto mounted definitely not let's look at all the devices available and if you notice we do not see any SDA or any SDB or anything of that sort actually there you go right we don't see any SDA, SDBs etc now this is where this is a pretty painful situation 
by default it doesn't look like we have all the drivers we require to connect and use our USB key and the classic problem as you can imagine is also there is very less space so you can't just jump and start installing stuff so keep that in mind and in the next video we will look at how to configure and install your USB key now again this is a free course please register on pentesteracademy.com slash yd to get all the course updates and other interesting stuff hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you have please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the infosec community thank you